And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There's a lot of pickup and delivery games. Games in which you pick up goods from one spot, take them somewhere else, get some money for it. Uh, most of these games, it seems to me, are train games, although there are a few that use camels or whatever things. But this may be the first game that uses tanks. It's called Caterpillar Age of Tank. And that may remind you maybe a little bit of Age of Steam. This has maybe the slightest... Uh, resemblance Age of Steam, but basically in this game, what you're doing is you are driving a tank around delivering goods from one spot to another. It's the future, you know, everything's blown up and such, so all you have left are tanks. And you can also shoot at the other tanks and steal their resources while you're at it. An interesting game. Let's take a look and see. Here's the initial board, and you can see on this board here are four different cities, Middle Land, Lost World, Next World, and Metropolis. Now, Metropolis and this whole black line, this whole area is not used in a two or three player game. But each of these cities has numbers on them, and those are basically the number of cubes that are placed on them at the beginning of the game. They show the resources that are available on them. So, for example, in a three or four player game, we put four red cubes up here in the Lost World, and we'll put more cubes. Blue cubes are located in each of the cities, and these are basically wild any color. But other than that, there's four different color cubes, red, yellow, black, and purple. If you notice all over the board, there's different types of terrain. And each of these terrains, thanks to the handy dandy key up in the corner, has a certain amount of movement that it requires to go through it. You'll notice that on the dark gray, uh, right here in this area, I drew mountains because we were having a hard time distinguishing that from the somewhat less dark gray, at least in bad lighting it was more difficult to see, so I had to draw mountains on that. The game comes with five weather cards. Three of them are placed here randomly. A marker is placed on this, and it forms a track, and you'll be moving this marker on the track to show what the weather is like. Now the weather matters for two different things. One, for movement. It can hinder movement. For example, here in the snowy weather, uh, it will hinder movement. But it also, since your tanks are run by solar energy, will determine how far, how much your tank can recharge each turn. It's also a turntable for the game, as I said, and there's a bit of randomness in it. And so you have that to show how long the game is going to take. Each player starts the game with a display like this in front of them. They have two cards for their tank. This card over here is the storage, where you'll place cubes as you get them. Initially, players can only place in the top six. Tanks can carry six cubes, but there is an upgrade where they can place nine cubes in their tank. Over here, uh, each tank starts with one die, and that shows energy. You will expend that energy to move, and you will recharge it using solar recharging to get it back up so that you can move again. Down below are the numbers one through six, and you start with three shields on those numbers. When other tanks attack you, attacking is done simply by rolling a six-sided die. And if they happen to roll a number, for example, let's say they roll a one, where a shield was, your shield would absorb the hit, and they would need to roll that again to hit you there. And you can buy up to four shields and have them defending your tank during the course of the game. But most of the game is really based on these action cards up here. You have two tank tokens of your color. One is placed on the board itself to move around. The other is going to be used on these cards. Each turn, you can use one of your cards and then use another one of your cards. So you move your tank token to show which card you've last used. So you can never use the same card twice, even between turns. If you want, you can use the flip side of a card. Each card has two sides to it. And so if you want to use the flip side up in the corner, it will show a cost to flip that card over. So let's say instead of using attack, I want to use distant attack. I can go there, but I'll have to pay one one. And the game does provide a pile of coins as one. Now, this is a really neat concept here because we have these five different cards. Let's go over what they do. The one card lets you move. Pretty simple. You just uh, subtract the number you want to move from the tank, taking terrain into effect. The other side develops. It lets you add a second die where you can buy two dice. You can have the two dice here, which lets you have more recharging ability, more movement, or it lets you develop all these cards that you have here. You have an upgraded version of them. Say, for example, the one I just talked about, the move now becomes a power move, where you can move your tank the number of a dice, but 
all obstacles, like all terrain on the board, is cost one less. And the develop here, to add an extra die, costs a little bit less. So you could develop this card up if you want. The other cards, this one lets you recharge your tank. The other side lets you get rid of a terrain piece on the board. Each player places a terrain piece on the board at the beginning of the game. This lets you get rid of them. The other one lets you attack other tanks. You want to do that because you can steal their goods. You can attack them adjacent to or one away. And you get these tokens that show that you've defeated another tank. They're worth victory points at the end. And you can steal their goods. You can rest, which is a way to get money back. Or you can do a double move using both dice if you have them. You can do an immediate recharge. just gives you a better recharging. You don't have to worry about the weather. Uh, but you have to be in a city to get that. Or load up. Take cubes from one city and move them to another. It's very simple, the game is very easy, and as you're playing, you're simply moving your piece around the board, trying to avoid the other tanks, shooting at them, stealing their goods, trying to get the goods to the city so that you can then get a payoff. As the game starts, you'll get cards from different cities, ones that you don't start in, you start in one of the cities. And that card, for example, here, this shows that Lost World wants one yellow cube, one black cube, one red cube. For each of the cubes on this card that you deliver, you'll get a price. For example, if you do the one yellow, you get four. The black gives you four. The red gives you three. And if you do the whole order, like you're supposed to, you'll get a bonus of plus three at the top. And the orders are different for the different cities wanting different cubes. And so that's basically the game. Once you get to the end of the weather track, each player will take stock of all the different things that they have. They will uh, consult a victory point card that shows you get points for each cube that you've delivered. You get points for different terrain that you've cleared. You get points for upgrading your abilities. You get points if you have a majority of cubes and points every time you've attacked another tank. And so there's a lot of different things going on, but games are over very quickly, and whoever has the most points is the winner. The game does not look like much coming in a wooden box, but the box does is pretty sturdy. And the components itself are, are very nice, other than that, the shading of the board itself. The cards are good quality. I like the dice. I like the, you know, the cubes. Well, what do you do? They're in all the different games. For me, knowing when to upgrade or flip these cards and use the different cards, that was a really neat concept of the game. And the fact that you can attack other players and steal their stuff. Even if it's kind of just a, a dice shootout, well, you know us in this show, we like dice. So dice are fun to roll and dice are fun to use. Uh, the only... Th problem I would say is this game does not work nearly as well with two players because you don't have as much interaction in the game. It's really fun with four because there's four different cities and there's three other tanks that are out to get your goods and so you've got to move across the board quickly utilizing a different terrain. This is a very unique interesting game and it's best because it's quick and fast. Check it out. Thanks for joining us today. For more written audio and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.